Yeah, okay. So, uh, a quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, so, we have free vouchers for, with exciting goodies for everyone in the audience here. Uh, use the code uh, SARANG10, that is all caps, no space, to avail a 10% discount on all products on deltastore.in. That is SARANG10, all caps, no space, for deltastore.in. And these codes are for everyone. So share it among your friends, even participants, spectators, everyone can use it. Use it by the end of March. And remember that the code can only be used once. And also shout out to our logistics sponsor, DHL. So I think, sir, we can now begin. So I don't think you need an introduction per se, because I'm sure that everyone in the audience knows who you are. But still, I'm just going to say, say it. So, dear audience, this is one of the finest directors of the Tamil film industry, Gautam Vasudeva Menon, aka GVM, as he is lovingly called. He's, he has many critically acclaimed and super hit films like Minnale, Varnamayaram, Vinay Tandi Varvaya, Yenne Arindal. He's a screenwriter, director, actor, producer. He's very multi talented. So, you must have recently seen him in the Netflix anthology film Pava Kadegal. So, I think we can just start now. Thank you for joining in, sir. Thank you. Um, it's a yeah. pleasure and honor to be in Saram. Uh, yes, sir. I'll be but, online, but then the show must go on, right? So Yes, yeah. sir. We're trying to preserve the Sarang spirit here. Yeah. So this year's Sarang's theme is Vintage Vogue. So we are actually remembering our past now. Uh, you have completed more than 20 years in the film industry. So how do you feel looking back on your career? I think it's just a few year, a few days and 20 years. I think. So not yes, more than 20 years. But uh, I, I keep saying this. Every film is like making your first film. And uh, especially the film I'm, I've just finished and the film I'm going to get into now is like I'm making my, actually my first film. So, yes, uh, but the journey has been good. Um, been filled with a lot of learning as well. and um, I've learned in the process of uh, you know making films um, about people about my own work um, about the world and uh, I'm sure this journey has been uh, you know uh, taken by a lot of other people uh, in life uh, yes. you know, in this world and uh, Mm -hmm. I'm so uh, you know a uh, simple uh, follower of uh, a lot of uh, you know, very popular people. I think in that sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so can you provide us a glimpse of your journey from an engineering student to a great director? I think many people in the audience might have the similar dream. Me being one. <laughs> uh, I was especially hoping not to talk about my engineering career uh, while uh, you know amidst uh, IITNs and NSAR. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, really for, uh, well, the four years in college was really good. It was a small college down south, and uh, uh, you know, uh, I did mechanical engineering. Yes, uh, what I remember most, and what I still, uh, you know, take away from those four years in college is the friends that I made. Uh, yes, sir. You know, my my knowledge of Tamil uh, that developed yes. in those four years in college. Uh, you yes, know, my sir. reading, my writing. Uh, a lot of travel while in college and uh, the whole, uh, you know, fellowship of being amidst, you know, a lot of uh, like-minded and uh, other kind of people, uh, you know, so yes. that, was big, that was a big takeaway. And that's why I also insist with people coming to work with me that college and school are like very important to sort of streamline one's uh, you know, life and uh, career and all that stuff. So uh, engineering was good in the sense that I, I think I, I really went at it the first two years. But the third and fourth year, my interest started, uh, you know, drifting and uh, went more into how do I make my first film and what do I write. Uh, so there was a lot of writing that I did while I was in college. And uh, once I finished uh, and I came out, um, I did. Uh, I was in the marketing uh, side of uh, work with the AutoCAD software and trying to meet people to sell AutoCAD software to some people and all that stuff. Uh, but in the meanwhile, while I was doing that, I was also trying to work with a few filmmakers uh, you know, whose work I've loved and cherished before that money was sold and all that. So people like that, uh, whose offices I've been to almost every day uh, for about three to four years trying to get work. And I landed, uh, you know, uh, work at Rajiv Men and Sir's place. And since then, actually, actually there's been no looking back. Okay. So I hope the audience has taken notes now. 
and is ready to execute their dreams. <laughs> uh, could you tell us what are your inspirations and your creative process? What do you bring to the table? What are your visions? So I never work with a plan. Like if you ask me now, uh, Jyotir, do I have a, a dream film that I want to make? No, I don't have any such. Uh, for me, I don't know what I'm going to write when I sit to write or when I sit to make my next film. Even if it's you know amidst strife and it, even if it's amidst a lot of issues and stuff like that, and if I have to make a film, when I sit to write. I just let you know uh, the words and my thoughts just flow into whatever zone it takes me into. I don't set out to make an action film. Yes, sometimes when you work with the with the superstars or the big heroes or the big stars, they do tell you that can we do an action film or can we do can we do a certain kind of a film. So somewhere you try and streamline your thoughts into that, but it's still where your thoughts take you. You know, right. and I just let it flow, right. and I completely go with my gut and my instinct about things. And sometimes you know that goes wrong, and you have to like really accept that. So. My creative space is such. So when I sit with technicians, when I sit with a music director to compose a song, we we discuss a lot. I I have a, a lot of writing done for the song, for the music. But whatever comes at me first, I just grab it because it connects with me, you know. And I try, I like to work with people like that. So for me, everything is in is in the flow of things, and uh, nothing is planned. If that answers your question, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, how do you think that the lockdown had impacted the that creative process that you have? And do you think that uh, how was work on Karthik Dial Sadeen and Putam Pudukale during the peak of the pandemic? Yeah, uh, it, it it didn't impact me uh, like I thought it would. Like first month was scary when everything was shut down and you uh, and you didn't know where this was going, right? Um, yeah. And how long and, and all that. So, so naturally, the writing kind of went into zones of should we have you know like a pre-COVID or a post-COVID kind of a scenario. When I write right. my character, should we involve the COVID scenario? You know, should we right. do the masks and talk and stuff like that? You know, so uh, yeah. that was a sort of a disturbing one, one and a half months. But after that, I just decided, you know, like we classify, uh, you know, our journey as filmmakers to the film and digital era sort of a thing. You know, we didn't, yeah. we didn't want to accept the digital uh, revolution so much. You know, and then yeah. we really eased into it and. And then welcomed it with open arms, and then now we are completely in it. So I looked at it like that, you know. And uh, I think I I did a lot of work during the lockdown in the sense uh, I wanted to tell the story of Karthik uh, and Jesse again. I've written a full script for Vinayakandi Varuvaya too, and I pulled out a little extract from this, and I called Simbu, I called Trisha, all phone calls, and called Rahman sir also, and asked him if you know we can do this. And all of them said yes, we'll shoot it ten to twelve minutes, no worries. And uh, it was done. You know, and then we moved to the music video that I did with Shantanu and uh, Kalai and uh, Satish choreographed it and Manoj shot it on my terrace. Mm -hmm. So we were careful about how we went about work. And then the Amazon anthology happened, and then the Netflix uh, post production of Power Kadigal happened, and then uh, Joshua shoot also we picked up. You know, towards the end of the uh, not the end exactly, but towards you know when things started opening up a bit and all. So, so a lot of lot of creative work happened. So I can't say it impacted me negatively. It was it only. Put us out a lot more. Yes, we are careful now. We've learned to work with minimal crews, and we've learned to shoot much faster. You know, within a within a certain time. You know, and all that. So it's all very good, actually. And now theaters have opened up, but the online yeah. platforms have encouraged us to put out interesting content that might not work in the theater. So are we are in a zone where we can easily coexist between the platforms and the. Uh, I mean, I say platforms. I mean the OTT platforms and the theatrical. Uh, you know, scenario. And uh, speaking on over-the-top platforms, do you think they Im impact the film industry a lot? No, I think it's they they support the industry to a large extent because um, uh, you know through the lockdown, uh, you know a lot of people sort of I won't say survive, but a lot of people were able to take their mind off uh, you know the pandemic with the entertainment that was provided by uh, you know all of us over the years and with the with the advent at that particular period of the OTT platforms and the films that were on it, uh, you know. Uh, we looked at and uh, it it broke all regional barriers sort of a thing like people sitting in the north yeah. watched a lot of Malayalam films and we've spoken a lot about yeah. this you know the actors became more popular across uh, you know like pan India sort of thing yes you know, and uh, everybody was aware of who's existing now uh, you know so I think it really opened up the world uh, you know for a lot of actors and directors like me and all that um, uh, so I I really look at it as a very positive uh, sort of a thing. So right now, like I said, we we are coexisting. You know, we have the choice of 
putting a film out in the theater sometimes the content that might not interest a producer or a theatrical distributor you know can easily be put across on the only platforms we convince the heads sitting there so it is a process yes but then there are options now it's a great stream for alternative filmmakers to sort of exhibit their ways and i'm looking at it as a very positive event okay sir so you have a new anthology film coming up uh, kuti love story i just saw the theater yes i mean the trailer yesterday yeah. Yeah. could you tell us your experience working on anthology films how was it to work with you know four other great minds which are coming together and how were the creative decisions taken there so i always been someone who's ready to collaborate and wanted to collaborate like from my first film itself like with my second film i took the script of kaka kaka to anurag kashyap and discussed with him i met a lot of writers to see if they can take their idea forward and write it for me i had to connect completely but i wanted you know additional screenplay and help with the the feel and look of the film and all that stuff so i came back and made it myself in that sense but i've always looked to collaborate so this seemed to open up that collaboration in a larger sense you know uh, i i felt really happy to collaborate with vitimar so the vignesh yeah. seven who are all you know like minded people but do not very different films and we were all sitting and you know bouncing off our scripts to each other once the films were made we looked at each other's films and discussed as to what could be there what what can be taken out or you know what really works and all that and we're looking to work uh, more you know in, in terms of collaboration and even the pretty stories that you mentioned was not, was actually shot just after you know the lockdown opened up and right in the middle of the pandemic where we were very careful we worked with a very minimal crew and we worked with actors who would be comfortable in that close environment to work with us it is a in that sense it is a restricted kind of thing but there is an emotion and uh, you know great storytelling within the four films i think you know and we decided when everything opens up we will wait and put it out in the theaters the first time an anthology with four directors you know is going to hit its hit the screen earlier sillu karapati was there which is made by alita which is one director and four stories uh, but this is the first time uh, four directors are making you know a four different stories and it it will pave the way for healthy collaborations i think so i love uh, being in that space completely and uh, there are a lot more interesting discussions are had with vetrimaran for both of us to come together to do a film you know one film yeah. two directors one story sort of a thing you know so yeah so and speaking on your series queen uh, there have been many attempts to portray the late jail alita on the screen but yeah. how is your uh, take different how is it unique so i i am i won't call it unique but um, uh, it is a fictional take on events inspired by a you know uh, like a true life person sort of a thing uh, you you are you are inspired by somebody's life to make a sort of a fictional tale and uh, it's drama it was emotional uh, you know it's great content i got in uh, with the idea thrown at me and we discussed the script and all that and then i moved out and then uh, i got a screenplay of 10 episodes from uh, reshma gadala who's already written meedha in pomosnam from me and i just loved the content and i decided you know i will direct it but then obviously with the with time constraints and with whatever else i was doing i was not able to direct all 10 so i brought a like minded person in uh, you know prasad who has made a film called kidari mm-hmm. and discussed it extensively and we sort of distributed the episodes amongst you know the two of us and uh, you know it was you know i think it was really good filmmaking even even though i'm saying it myself uh, you know i have to like uh, i give myself a pat on the back for queen actually okay yes sir i i also very much uh, like the series thank you so uh, coming on minale has completed 20 years as of uh, february 2nd congratulations on that sir thank so, you so how, how do you think your the concept of love has evolved throughout the films now it recently in the trailer for kuti story also i saw that you were talking about a platonic relationship so from uh, minale to vineta and divarwaya now to kuti story how do you think that you have changed the concept of it i i don't think love will ever change or evolve in that sense you know the way we film it and uh, the way uh, the, we become more aware of things like um, uh, um, you know stalking and and being hmm. woke about things those are the things we are we are more aware of while we film uh, and to portray things in a really nice way and love can become obsessive love can become dangerous right the way you show yeah. characters you know portray it on screen so uh, uh, i think we just more aware of these things right now uh, from yeah. minale to today i'd be a little more aware of or very aware of how to handle my characters but other than that 
the emotion is always the same as far as love is concerned right the okay. and also yeah. love is the same uh, you yeah. know in any two people uh, you know the feeling that it, that it evokes with the audience with the filmmaker and within the two characters uh, is is the same i think and uh, it's just different dimensions of how we can show it and portray it and i thrive on that you know i i love to handle it a little differently uh, you know it could be yeah. first it could be issues within oneself or it could be external issues that sort of don't bring people together uh, or like i said earlier it could be issues within one self that don't bring people together it's the understanding of what the feeling is between two people and uh, right. there might be a third person involved and that's why you're not able to get them one so you could do different dimensions of uh, love and uh, those are uh, the different areas that you could uh, you know work around rather wise like i said earlier it's the same thing from way back okay so what are your thoughts on the portrayal of women characters in the industry right now well i think it's um, uh, the fact that we had to talk about it itself indicates that uh, we still don't have really strong characters uh, you know or uh, uh, women protagonist oriented roles uh, you know they yeah. most films they we use women as props and uh, you know just for the song and uh, but but i'm saying it's largely evolved it's not like that to a large extent there are still some films that you know took the same line but thankfully lots of other filmmakers have moved out from that to make very interesting stories with women uh, uh, you know in the lead and uh, uh, being protagonists of the story and all that stuff uh, also i'm hoping there'll be more characters written for women in their 40s and 50s you know like mature relationship yeah. dramas uh um, uh you know and uh, uh, the human uh, human emotion human element kind of stories you know um so it's getting much better uh, there are very sensitive filmmakers who are handling these subjects and uh, i'm happy to be one among those directors who always handle these things very sensitively yeah, yeah. so uh, one i had a question from uh, vishnu sajan who asked me that uh, he has heard that most of your stories are inspired from incidents in your life yeah. so is that true yeah but not something like nadna sinaigal um uh, okay. uh, so so what you do is you put yourself in those characters to a large extent and okay. then you try and figure out if this is you you know we all so even when you're making the dark films i'm saying we all have a dark side we just don't cross the line right that's what yeah. makes us uh, sane and normal uh, thoughts come up so even pavakadegal was about one such thought that came up uh, in the character's mind which she shunned away and uh, you know sort of drop back normal see sort of a thing you know so when you don't cross the line you're normal and you're living in a sane world around yourself right but there are a lot of other stories from my own life that and characters you know that i've known and associated been associated with that i'd like to show on screen uh, or when i put when i write a story these characters sort of flit in and flit out or when i write something that has nothing to do with my life i try and put myself in that and i think i'm a little more open about these things so people generally assume that it's all from you know by my life and uh, things like that so uh so um, what would you say is your inspiration for your female characters if uh... well, largely the women around me starts from my mother at home uh, my wife i have two sisters and i draw a lot from them so we are all very close knit like most families and uh, uh, i grew up with my sisters not being too diff- too away in age uh, you know from me We, you know, right. my, my older sister, my younger sister is uh, the younger. The older of the two younger sisters is just eleven months younger than me, and the oh. and other sister is like four years younger than me. So we were all. I grew up listening to them talk, and you know their ideology about men and the world and all that stuff. You know, and she started working much before me, and she supported the family and all that. So I drew a lot from them. I draw a lot from the way my wife speaks and things she says, and of course the people I work with, the other women that I've met in my life and all that stuff. So. um uh you know completely inspired by everybody around me you know and i try to make it look like this is this is what it should be like this is how we should treat women and this is how women should be portrayed on screen and i i have a very conscious mind and effort to sort of make it like that yes sir so this next question was asked by kirtana and she had helped me with preparing this questions uh you are one of the directors that is perceived to have a very distinct style you know a gvm film has that a uh, brand attached to it like the voice overs the aesthetic so are these expectations a good thing or do they restrict or annoy you in any way you know, sometimes your strength also becomes your weakness you know when you do too much of that obviously you know it gets repetitive maybe yeah. 
and people think you know it's like saying the same thing over and over again so i'm also conscious about these things but i have a certain pattern about the way i write uh and i don't think there's anything wrong in that and within that i try and make it look as interesting and different as possible um but you need to be aware of what's happening and you need to be you need to keep abreast with what's happening around you from technique to the way you narrate a story to the way you portray characters on screen you can't be outdated at all you know and something that you made 20 years ago should work you know 20 years later um yes. uh, you know so you should be keenly aware of what is happening around you i read a lot and i try and keep myself updated with uh with with generally characters and emotions and you know all that so to answer your question yes i think sometimes your strength becomes your weakness like in anuki paim tota i thought you know the voice was very nicely done and danush read the script and said the voice was a brilliant uh but that sort of you know suddenly became um the critiquing point of the film where people said that you know the voice was sort of too much and all that stuff i still feel the way the voice overs were narrated uh you know didn't work um yeah. we didn't have time with danush to sort of give it you know that emotional narration that it needed it is a very flat rendition and that's why I, it didn't work is what i would like to think but then you know people might have a different opinion also about that so. Okay. So you frequently reference your previous movies as you know nice easter eggs in your own films and the films you have acted and we enjoy all those things especially the ending to Kandum Kandum we had a nice little easter egg from Vinay Tandy Varwa and that so how is it from your point of view such an easter egg I don't know I feel um, see that's the uh, the third dimension sort of a thing right in a film to talk about another yeah. film or it's like it's like um, uh, you know in a film like master you have in the soundtrack talapadi running you know uh, when you know his name is not that uh, but there is soundtrack and i do, i myself did that in minnale with as madhavan and abbas you know walk to meet each other you hear the soundtrack madi madi going around you know so yeah. there's no connection with the characters but then madhavan is madi right so we did that yeah. so um, so sometimes you break that by referencing your own work um, i think you have to be uh, what what's the word to use uh you have to be really insecure uh, not insecure about your work to sort of uh, you know take a dig at yourself is what i think you know like in uh, nitandi i had said avan oh, kadalik america varaikku pora ange irukku kerala po mudiyada and stuff like that. so somewhere you reference your own films you take a dig you make a pun on your own work i think it's nice in another film i mentioned uh, saying um, uh, you know that uh, one assistant director comes to work with gautam menon and the other guy says well avur kuda work panna avur padam mudikiradhu romba neram avum romba naal avum so uh, that's generally a perception right so uh, yeah. you know i don't mind uh, you know uh, you know you know saying it about myself so is this just this fun moments that i think sometimes work yeah, yeah so uh, speaking on those fun moments you know when a new movie is released we, we see new meme templates and all sometimes these are funny sometimes they take a dig at you so how do you face these trolls and how do you look at them uh, nothing it doesn't bother me at all um, i don't i don't think i've come across many negative trolls as such uh, but uh, even if there are i it's really okay i mean that's uh, so somebody sits in you know it's their livelihood maybe they're doing all this uh, you know for the fun of it you know uh, as long as it doesn't affect other people i'm really good with you know whatever comes my way yeah honestly So sir do you another question is do you think that audience should be open to content of other languages now we see people saying that they see korean series with subtitles so yeah. you should watch original movies with subtitles instead of remakes yeah absolutely i think so see also uh, if there's great content there's nothing wrong in sort of making it again for uh, another section of the audience which is uh, from another region or uh, speak another language you know like there are lots of english films or french films uh, that have been made uh, later in english by the same team you know just so that it reaches, reaches out to a larger maybe or wider audience sort of thing so nothing wrong in that but if you want to, if you ask me personally i would rather watch like if i'm watching a series in spanish i would watch it in spanish with subtitles and not the dubbed version because the okay. technical part of uh, you know the lip syncing worries me for those things uh, you know yeah. so i'm very technically yes, uh, you know grounded in that sense i'm not grounded i'm very solid about you know how i watch my content so i don't like to watch dubbed material i'd rather watch it in the original language with subtitles yeah 
So we were able to see your full acting side in uh, trans and KKK. So what were your experiences as an actor? So I'm a very reluctant uh, actor. I didn't set out to become an actor. I very very good at what I'm doing uh, with my filmmaking and direction and writing, and I'm happy being in that space. But these forays that you mentioned were mostly because of see, and I've done fleeting appearances in my own films, sort of yeah. like a celebration. Like if I if I'm in a frame standing behind, you know, Mr. Kamal Hassan, it's because I want to be there in that frame. It is just my way of celebrating the fact that I made a film with him. You know, so it's mostly that. Um, uh, but uh, these uh, two films and the other ones that you know that you mentioned and the other ones that I've done were because I wanted to be with that team. You know, like I'm a big fan of Fahad's work. I love yeah. uh, Anwar Rashid sir's work. You know, and I've seen his films, the films he's produced, and all that. I like his ideology when he speaks and all. So I wanted to be in that film, in their space. I took five to ten days off just to be with them to figure out how they make films. For me, it was a door opening. To figure out how another team works, you know, you don't get that opportunity otherwise. And uh, I didn't want to let go of that opportunity, honestly. And even the way Day Singh spoke to me, and uh, the idea that he mentioned, and it, it very honest and very doggedly, you know, came after me, sort of a thing in a good way. I'm saying, and I thought, okay, you know, let me do this because he's so, uh, uh, you know, in pursuit, uh, you know. So let me do this, uh, and it worked out well. Uh, you know, the scenes were in control. Uh, I won't say it was in my comfort zone, but then. They were very hesitant about telling me the last scene of the film, you know. And when they told me that, I loved it, and I said, "This is why I should have done the film, even otherwise." Uh, they say, um, you know. So whatever I've done after that is all because of the crew and the cast and the team there, and not because I really wanted to put myself out there. Honestly, I'm a very reluctant actor. Actor Pawar Kadigal was because I couldn't get an actor that I wanted. We were just going into there was there was only talk of uh, you know the COVID nineteen and lockdown being imposed and all that stuff. It was around March thirteenth or fourteenth that we went into filming. And an actor that I wanted, you know, didn't give me dates, so I decided, okay, very last minute, let me act in this. So, um, but it's been good, I think, largely. Yeah. So, uh, so could we see you more in front of the camera in upcoming films? Yeah, I mean, I have done um, some yeah, but, within uh, yeah. the period, and if some interesting, you know, director or somebody I'd like to be around with, you know, to watch them work comes up, then I'd definitely love to. Be these days yes that's my mindset so what are your thoughts on your musical side so when did you first explore start exploring it uh, i think it started at home uh, from the time i was like a, you know 5 6 year old i remember the songs that played at home all the time you know constantly there would be music from a radio or a you know cassette player or a record player at my grandfather's place and uh, old hindi music old tamil music you know and we used to discuss these songs i it was not just some music that was playing any song that would play while everybody else is doing their own thing there would be a mention of the song or my mother would hum these songs back and there would be a mention of the singer so for me i grew up knowing the voices of most of the singers from uh, from yester years you know like if you play a song i can tell you who sang the song is this rafi is this kishor kumar is this uh, you know tm soundarajan is this piece of shila ma'am you know stuff like that uh you know and there a lot of english music so and then i started getting interested with the way music was produced uh, you know in every song what is the instrumentation what are the interludes like and then obviously from 12 13 it was raja sir you know completely you know there there was a whole uh, list of songs that we looked forward to listening every day across the radio and then school and college we used to discuss raja sir's music thread there and then every interlude is still you know we can hum an interlude from any of the songs from you know the 80s and the 90s of raja sir you know there's no way you can't uh, you know and that doesn't happen today so so much of music you know came into me i imbibed all that and then when i set off to i also tried to learn i'm still learning uh, i'm trying to learn notes and trying to play you know uh, an instrument and all that stuff but that will go on forever i think uh, but i have access to a lot of musicians so i don't want to really put myself out there so when i work with my music composers firstly i look for a connect and when that happens i write in my script i write the music parts extensively like if there's a song i don't generally say love song and move on i don't generally say folk song or pathos song and move on i describe musically why there should be music in this place you know i describe why this particular scene has to be um, narrated through music or with music you know and then i'm able to say that to the composer he gets really inspired 3 4 hours of discussion and only after that they'll start playing the you know the mu- playing music on their instruments 
and whatever tune has come my way the first tune i've grabbed it so far in every song that i've done you know you can i mean number of films number of songs 60 plus i'm sure in all of these songs uh, you know are all first tunes that came my way with no can be changes can be changed that sort of a thing you know so i've been blessed to have worked with some brilliant composers and i'm very happy in that space musically yes so now in the next segment we have some uh, you can say a rapid fire but a little bit of fun questions you can take your pace so what would you say is your favorite memory with one of the actors that you have worked with i can pick two straight away i mean it's kamal sir on waiter to valiadu where uh, you know we were very very respectfully scared of him and all that we really like to so and uh, obviously uh, no we didn't try to impress him everywhere we want to be very real about it but to even get him to do a second take would be a big ask you know like he do a first take and somewhere if i wanted to do it differently not that the first take was badly done or anything like that because he is a master right and you can't tell yeah. him how to act and stuff like that obviously so but a first take would be a little different from and he does very different things in front of the camera you will can never write down that an actor will do this as far as kamal sir is concerned Uh, you know, so so very reluctantly, I would go and ask him with a lot of thought, should I go? Should I go? And all that, and I'd go and tell him, so can I get a second take? Uh, you know, so then he'll say, why you don't like what I did? I said, no, no, sir, all good. <laughs> can we get a little different take on this? You know, like can you do this a little differently? Then he'll say, okay, show me once. I said, no, sir, I don't know that. You know, uh, no way. You know, I'll show you. But if you give me something else, I'll be able to tell you whether this is what I wanted. So that discussion will go on for about ten minutes, and then only a second take will happen. And this is all. this is all um, you know in a very very great space i'm saying there was nothing negative about these things i love the challenge of you know what it threw at me you know so this i clearly remember and vinay tandu varuvai was a was a great film to work on it's one of my best best uh, technical working experiences because with simbu it's magic you know you just have to be ready with the camera he's so good and you know whatever lines and all that you talk to him and suddenly as he's rehearsing with trisha i will say run the camera you know there were a lot of moments that while the rehearsals were on we grabbed it and he'll suddenly look at me brother sonna la camera over there enna brother pandringa and all he'll say so so we had you know i remember this especially you know while since you asked me this question uh Uh, if i have give you a choice would to be in front of the camera or behind the camera for the rest of your career which yeah, one would yeah, yeah. no doubt no doubt yeah if you give me a choice yes okay uh which one is a which one would be a favorite movie that you wanted to work on not yours anyway i would have loved to work on nayagan i i think i would have i was only 15 then 15 okay. 16 and i would have i would have learned so much because with every film of mani sir i have learned i have studied i have not done so much of work in 4 years of engineering but every film of mani sir i'd go the second time onwards with a notebook and i'd you know i'd write down notes uh, you know i'd sit in rohini theater and i remember people looking at me strangely because <laughs> i wrote down notes of how many shots have been cut in this one particular scene so it takes you time to understand that right later you realize it's one shot that might have been taken another shot that might have been taken and this shot is spliced across the scene you know you realize that later as you get to work and when you work with the director so i would try to understand how many shots and why is the mood like this why is the lighting like this why is the actor said in this tone and stuff like that so i did a lot of learning by watching his films i have not worked with sir as yet but uh, uh if you are to answer your question it would be nayagan i think yeah okay sir any character from a movie that you wanted to portray as an actor Oh, that's tricky. There's lots of characters, but I don't know what the actors would say if that if they hear this. Uh, but I would love to do what Kamal sir did in Kurdi Punal. I thought, you know, very really intense stuff. The way that, especially that action scene with Kurdi Nazar and Kamal sir inside the room, the dialogue exchange, and the way you know his voice is the narration that runs through the film. I would love to do something like that. And I know I wouldn't be anywhere near him, but uh, it's even unfair to compare or anything like that. But I would love to do something like that. Yes, sir. So, one actor you really want to work with? Ah, uh, Vijay and Vijay Sethupathi for sure. Wow. Would would we see it any time soon? I hope so. If you put out the right energy towards that happening, the universe will give that back to you. So, I am um, doing that. You can also do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I would certainly try. <laughs> sir, a young director who is going to change things. 
Um, I, I, Karthik Subaraj, Lokesh Kanakaraj, for sure. Uh, yeah. I like their ideology, the way they talk, the way they think about films and stuff like that. I hope they really go on to make original films, original stories, and, and they're so capable of that. Um, definitely these two guys. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. So let me just take some few questions from the audience. Sure. Uh, 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 sir, uh, Bharat Balaji asks you, Sir, please do share your experience with actor Surya. Surya, uh, we, so I narrated Minnale the Surya many, many years ago uh, to his father, and uh, at that time they didn't like the script. They said, No, we'll do something else. And then Kaka Kaka happened with Surya because Jyotika recommended, you know, why don't you go see this film, Nanda? And I said, I know Surya, I've narrated for him and all that. She said, no, no, but see this film and he's really, you know, done something very different and all that. And then when I saw Nanda, I decided, you know, he should be, he should be Anmut Chalman and Kaka Kaka. And since then we've forged a sort of a, uh, we forged a friendship, you know, and uh, you know what he did for Varana Mai Ramai. It is a story about, uh, you know, a coming of age story about a boy who ends up becoming, you know, one of the commandos of the Indian army. But then I brought my father's, you know, life into it. He very graciously agreed to play both father and son, and he did so much of work to make that film happen. Uh, I think we have a great working relationship. Uh, we drifted away a bit, but we've come back now to work on a, a Netflix project together, and uh, we vibed really well. And there was a great connect with us, and uh, it was back. It was like back to being, uh, you know, uh, on the sets of Kaka Kaka. Uh, yeah. With us, and you will see that film very soon coming out, and it's come out really, you know, really well. It's a beauty, I think. Yeah. Right, sir. So, how would you describe your on-set personality? Are you strict or are you easygoing? You should ask my team. They're all sitting inside there. I'm uh, <laughs> not strict at all. But somewhere you have to command that respect, right? As yeah. Respect so that work happens in the right way. They should take you seriously, right. knowing that you know things should go well. Um, your intent should be put out that you are serious about what you're doing. And there's not, yeah. that's not a playground, actually, you know, where... Uh, even on the playground, you know, sportsmen put everything into it. I'm saying, but this is not, this is not sort of like a fool's paradise sort of a thing. You know, everything, everything is yeah. done. So you command that respect without shouting, without being strict, by being friendly and nice. And I think I believe in in, in a work environment like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me just. It's all around. It's 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 bright enough, right? Uh, it's not yes, dark sir, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, how do you think the anthology format would do in theaters? Because in a OTT platform, you can see it as episodes, but for a three-hour film to be condensed to have four or five stories, how would that happen? I don't know. See, I think it'll it'll appeal to a section of the audience, like how. And like I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking about my own work, but a film like Nadine and I was very clearly for a section yeah. that likes films like that. It's not a family audience film, right? It's 18 and above, and then you also have to go to theater only if you like those, uh, you know, serial killer, you know, slasher kind of film, right? That's a couple yeah. of mindset by itself. So in that sense, I'm sure there are a lot of people who like to see a story unfold and then that sort of finish quickly and then move on to another story. Silla Karapati is the only other example. And a couple of foreign films that have done really well, you know, when when it released in theaters, and they're also, you know, on all the ordinary platforms now. So, by and large, it's all experimental. So everything is a try, and we are in that space where we are insecure about our work. We would love to try and put it out to the audience to see. And if it works, yes. If it doesn't work, we'll move on to the next experiment. So I'm I'm always in that space. Okay. So, to what extent do you think we should enforce political correctness in movies? To a large extent, to a large extent, and I believe it's according to the zone that film is in. Okay, so when you're making a film about a serial killer or somebody who's like you know uh, mentally uh, not balanced, um, you know, and you you're going into a film knowing that you know that it's going to be dark and it's going to be this and it's going to be you know all that and contrasting stuff, right? In, in that zone, you have to understand why this film is not being politically correct about certain things. You know, and it's not necessarily that only if good things are shown, you guys are going to imbibe and take it from there and stuff like that. So, you have a mind of your own and 
sometimes you look at it as entertainment sometimes you look at it as sh- i mean sheer entertainment sometimes you look at it as it's there's a nice message being told because you have to figure out what the zone of the film is yeah and i completely believe in that yes you have to be woke about it there is political correctness as needed there is a large responsibility on your shoulders and all that but depending on the kind of film that you're sort of subjecting the audience to i hope you know i'm i'm, I'm kind of clear in my thought here yes sir sir uh, uh, a question about the movie trans was language an issue while shooting it so i i am not uh, uh, you know so people think i'm malayali you know uh, by birth and all that stuff but my dad's malayali my mom is tamil and we lived only in chennai uh, for the first 5 6 years we were in calicut but then after that uh, you know from the third standard onwards i've studied in chennai and then i moved to chennai to do my engineering you know dad and mom also met while they studied in madras christian college so he's also from here and we all speak a lot of tamil and english and hindi and, uh, you know and i studied hindi in school i studied tamil in college i learned to read and write tamil uh, you know by myself and all that i read a lot in tamil and all that so malayalam doesn't come easily in that sense because you don't have access to the language so much my, my grandmother and my uh, dad side of the family uh, lived in otapalam and i used to make these uh, uh, you know visits to them to sort of uh, touch with the family and, you know we're all very big joint sort of family yes but i used to make sure you know that that is constantly maintained and all that so i can dabble a, a little bit in malayalam also uh, but this was t- tough because it was this live sound this sync sound on location you know there was no dubbing later so i insisted uh, or i requested uh, for anwar sir to give me all the lines much in advance and uh, they did that it was a fully bound script right so then i i rehearsed i did a lot of um, you know reading up the lines it was like being in school actually uh, so read up on the lines and all that and went properly rehearse also because the monster fahad was also there on the set you know and everybody was a monster around dilish potan was there uh, chembur vinod was there uh, i had a scene with nazaria also in the film and they're all actors who par you know par excellence you know they're like brilliant actors they they make it look so easy and here i was you know like a more like a first timer you know trying to make things look natural and all it was tough but thankfully i think it came out well yeah uh, so i think we have a time for one more audience question um uh, let me just find one which i have not already asked uh i think yeah i think that's it from the audience that we have so so you know every day i see there is some news article about you there is you know the updates and stuff. is it a good thing i don't know is there no, obviously it's a, it's a very good thing sir uh, you know we have dhruva nakshatran joshua kutti love story navrasa kamal and kadambari and sequels to your previous films one movie with simbu sir there are so much content which we have for the next coming years so any updates on that sir yes, honestly it's honestly it's we've never looked at it as i've never looked at it as you know being in the news being in the limelight let's put something out it's always done based on the request of a producer or of the team around you that we need to put this out now and you know and i talk you know i'm very open in my discussions with who i speak to and uh, you know i let people know what i'm doing and uh, even my issues are actually actually the industry there are lots of people who are going through you know uh, issues and stuff nobody talks about it i do uh, and i'm right now at a space where you know most things are sorted out and uh, i'm in a good space about my writing and my work and all that so yes thank you there is a lot of work um, you know uh, that's coming ahead uh, netflix will release uh, navarasa very soon they're working on it uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant effort by mani ratnam sir and uh, jayendra sir who came together with the idea of bringing nine directors to direct nine emotions and the entire proceeds from uh, you know film goes through the film industry that didn't work for about 10 months during the lockdown and the pandemic you know so it was a beautiful thought and we all came in uh with no expectation just but just but just to make a film uh and with no remuneration and all that stuff you know so uh, all act all the big actors came in you know likewise so i was very happy to be part of that project kutti stories again was made on a very um, uh, restricted kind of an environment trying to be safe and uh, the stories were also written the vijay sethupathi film in that is brilliant actually it is done so well uh, the film is directed by nalan kumarasamy and uh, you should catch the anthology just for that film it's in a very different space it's 35 40 minutes but it's in a great space you know and 
I'm a big fan uh, of the director and uh, Vijay Sethupathi, so I'll be looking forward to watching that in the theater. Uh, and then, like you mentioned, yes, Joshua is done. Jhumna Chitram is getting done. We we try to release it in May. I know I've said this across four years, but then sometimes people have to understand that every film has a journey. And I'm not holding on to my film because I don't want to let it out. I want to let it out, but we had to face some difficulties while we went about filming the film and producing the film and all that. And everything is sorted out now, and we're trying to put it out very soon. Uh, I make films only so that the audience can see it, and not just me inside my house, you know. So Tarun Chitra will release very soon. And uh, after that, I'm picking up the Simbu film uh, with Rahman sir doing the music, and I'm so looking forward to that. It's comfort zone for me, even though there's a lot of work. Uh, it's a very intense uh, film, but uh, uh, I'm so looking forward to filming Rahman sir's music and interacting with him and getting music done. And filming even one frame with Simbu is like always magical for me. So I'm looking forward to that. We are also very anxiously waiting for all the good content that is coming towards us, sir. Uh, sir, Thank would you mind if I ask you to do a dialogue for me? Okay. Uh, can you do that? Uh, Another sketch from uh, Kanum Kanum. Okay. Na Roman era ma follow panting ni naanu pathu thene sketch. Huh? Yoru kera thene. Oh, Porul var. Onu parla ma bitu varingla. Century watch mani yar mille. Ya family car le kudur ganga. Onu drop pant bello ando ma bitu panra varinga da. Na da? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that. Okay. I think that with that it, we have come to an end to our session. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, from your, I'm sure you are busy with so much content that you're about to put out. But thank you for taking your time and uh, you know almost visit almost visiting IIT Madras. You get to see all the IIT students though. I, thank I, you for I, live, I, I live very nearby and I've been into the campus like. Many times I've also performed at the culturals when I was in college, and uh, I've had lots of memories of being in IIT. I know for the final years, uh, this might be a slightly disappointing year because you've not been in college so much, and uh, especially with Sarang and the whole cultural and the festivities that normally happen there. Uh, I know it might be disappointing that this time it's virtual and online, and you know that whole uh, feeling of fellowship and being together is not happening. But hey. Life has to go on, and uh, yeah. think about it. Like worse things could have happened, and we're still able to like talk to each other and be in that space of the whole cultural spirit. I don't want to sound philosophical, but I my heart really goes out yeah. to you guys, and, and uh, you know, thank you so much for inviting me, Saran, to be in this. is always a an honor and a pleasure. And uh, you actually been following uh, me for almost three months to get this done, and thank you for giving me the time <laughs> and uh, indicating the date almost you know three months ago. So thank you so much. Yeah. No, sir. Thank you, sir, for having us, uh, giving me the opportunity to host you, and maybe in the future we could see you on our on ground sarangits as well. That will be a pleasure, always. Yeah. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. thank you a lot. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm going to end the session.